Okay, we'll get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Tony Cockmore, president of the DFW BIM Infrastructure User Group. And today's guest, we have Sam from Beyond CAD. So Sam, if you'd like to take it away and uh, talk about what you're going to be introducing today to us. Absolutely. And thanks for having me, Tony. It's an yeah. honor to be here and excited to talk about kind of my background and what I'm doing now with Beyond CAD. I'm going to share my screen and, and talk through a couple of things. And most of what I'll be sharing is on our website. If you go to beyondcad.com mm -hmm. and, and then it, towards the end, I'll be doing some live demo so I can show you or anyone else uh, okay. in, in life. So uh, if you go to our about us page, it kind of gives our background. And essentially I I'm in the Las Vegas area. I graduated from university of Nevada, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. started out my career at, um, at Nevada department of transportation and that's kind of where I realized that I didn't like civil engineering. I just, you know, <laughs> well, I don't know if you or anyone else can relate to that, but, um, eventually I kind of ran into visualization mm -hmm. and started using what was back then infrastructure modeler, which mm -hmm. is now InfraWorks. Yep. I dabbled some in, in SketchUp and Revit and stuff in college, but, um, I, I started doing that for some PMs when I was at the department of transportation and they loved it. And so I knew eventually I wanted to do visualization full time mm -hmm. and spent a year at Kimley Horn in the Las Vegas office. And then in 2014, I, I both got my engineering license and I kind of left the engineering world <laughs> and started Civil FX, which was a visualization company where we could provide 3D visualization services in the industry. So uh, long story short, spent six years building up civil FX, we provided interactive visualization. We used a lot of, um, towards the end, a lot of unity, um, workflow. Eventually we started using some unreal engine and built it up to a team of 10 full-time employees. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, uh, Wayne Sullivan. He he's been doing this for a long time and I, I was able to hire him in 2018 and he really kind of took us to the next level because mm -hmm. my background was civil engineering and, and he had a lot of years of experience in visualization. And so, um, I, in 2020, I was approached by parametrics mm -hmm. about the purchase of civil FX. And so I sold it, um, over zoom during the pandemic, sold civil FX to parametrics and, uh, was appreciative of their interest. And, and actually when they came to me, you know, I had 10 employees and, and I'd already for a long time, I knew that there was a gap in the visualization workflow for infrastructure, which is why we needed a team of 10 and you needed uh, 3ds max and Rhino and unity and, and Photoshop and, um, premiere all this complex software to do this one thing. And so I'd already started kind of building, a, a better application for that. And when parametrics approached me, you know, I said, you know, let's talk about selling the client services, but I'm really passionate about this, this product we're building. Mm -hmm. And so of the 10 employees, seven went to parametrics and myself and two programmers stayed with me. And, and I started a new company called beyond CAD, where we would continue building that application because I'd used stuff like Lumion and twin motion. Yep. And, you know, I was just blown away by how easy they made visualization, but those are primarily, primarily built for for architecture. And, you know, whenever we tried to use them for, uh, you know, infrastructure projects, at civil FX, they just, they would kind of fall apart, um, with things like traffic and things like, uh, the asset library. And so my goal was to, to make a Lumion, but for infrastructure. And so that's what we've been doing. We just launched early access of beyond cat in, uh, in September, and we're gearing up towards a full public launch in first quarter of 2022. Mm -hmm. um, beyond cat is built on unreal engine. We received a mega grant from them. So our funding is from that mega grant and also the sale of civil FX. And our team today consists of, we have myself, four programmers and, uh, two part-time artists. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, we're, we're starting to collect some users, get really good feedback mm -hmm. and we just have some incredible features. So that's what I'm going to kind of focus on is, is what beyond cat is, why I feel like it's filling a hole in the market, but uh, I don't know if you have any questions so far, Tony. No, I, I remember seeing uh, the, uh, the civil FX um, you know, for the past few years, and I was interested in the software. Then I saw you launch the new one. I was like, oh, it's going to be great. You know, um, uh, I've actually downloaded the trial version, you know, um, and uh, been watching your videos on LinkedIn. And I think you got some on YouTube also, uh, if I remember right. So 
Uh, and I think it's amazing, you know, definitely for, you know, road infrastructures or, or intersections and stuff. Uh, that's what I'm really focused on. And I like the, what you're doing with it. And, um, you know, typically, you know, in the past, we've actually had to like do stuff in InfraWorks, but then push it to 3DX Max and then push it into Lumion or Twin Motions. And it's like four or five steps. And then, you know, so, but here I like, you know, uh, what you're doing with your software. So I'm kind of like, very excited about it. And I definitely see the benefits of it. So awesome. Okay. Well, uh, I want to share this video. It's about mm -hmm. three minutes long. And uh, this video, I kid you not, is a result of my wife asking me. Why doesn't your website have one of those really simple explainer videos? I think it would help people. So yeah. uh, we got that made, uh, got it on the website. Oh, it's not three minutes. It's, Transportation a, and infrastructure it's a minute and a half. And again, okay. this is on our front, our webpage. So you can check it out. Yeah. So this is, I'm going to kind of talk through this. Just talking about how visualization is, uh, visualization in itself is complex mm -hmm. as our infrastructure projects. It can be very expensive and time consuming and the existing tools built for architects don't often work for these type of transportation projects. Mm. So what do we do? We took my background in civil engineering and the last 10 years of visualization and we took Unreal Engine and we used it to make a better visualization tool that we call BeyondCAD. And BeyondCAD is a PC application that you download and install on your computer, you're going to want a graphics card like you would for any other visualization engine. And there, and then you import your 3D files. So it doesn't do the modeling. You need to do the importing. You need to do the modeling somewhere else. And then you import them into uh, beyond cat. You can texture it, add assets, add traffic. And by doing this, you're able to cut down the time of visualization from weeks or days to days to hours to get something really nice and uh and then you can coordinate with, with your clients and so what, what we're what i'm really trying to do what my overall strategy is mm -hmm. is to do what was done to architecture about 10 years ago and, and what you saw back then was architects would outsource their visualization to uh to vis different viz groups mm -hmm. and then things like lumion came along where it was real-time visualization that really cut down the time mm -hmm. it took to visualize. And when that happened, you didn't see them outsourcing as much. You saw them doing the visualization in-house. So I'm hoping that by making this tool, making it not only powerful, but also, also user-friendly yep. for engineers, for people that aren't artists, that we can put the power of visualization in the hands of those yep. that are doing the modeling themselves. And if that happens, then you know more and more firms will just be doing their more and more engineers and designers mm -hmm. and CAD operators will be doing their own visualization, uh, especially on you know mid to small projects mm -hmm. because um, it's the technology has gotten better and, and there's been this gap and that's what we're trying to fill with mm -hmm. beyond CAD. So there's a couple other videos on the website. I want to show this one. We actually I just released this this morning. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me find the actual video file because that way it's not going to buffer. So it's called this one.
So, yeah, that was really great. That was really great. Thanks. Uh, let me let me ask a quick question. Yes, so please. I see all the animation with the traffic. Are I guess are you just manly uh, controlling the traffic, or are you pulling from like a traffic report, um, a TIA or traffic analysis report, and trying to match what it shows on there? That's a really good question. So the goal with traffic and visualization primarily, and again, this is from my experience over the past decade or so, mm -hmm. is you're just trying to make traffic look realistic because mm -hmm. yeah. you're trying to communicate the project, whether mm -hmm. it be a new interchange, uh, yeah. a ramp, a cul-de-sac, whatever it is, you don't want the traffic to be distracting. And mm -hmm. so the goal of our traffic system is you can manually place those paths. You can make it so that there are intersections so that traffic slows down and merges. Um, it, it waits at the signal and all of that in the goal of making it look as realistic as possible. That said, there mm -hmm. are scenarios where there has been traffic simulation done using mm -hmm. something like VSIM or AIMSUN mm -hmm. and those use actual, you know, uh, field reported data yeah. and then simulation on top of that. So to that point, and you know, that video, we put together 13 different things, the reasons why our traffic system is different, mm -hmm. but one thing that that doesn't mention is we're actually getting VSIM working, VSIM importing working right now as well. And that should be available at least in public beta in January or February. Yeah. And so that's going to be, actually, I have a demo. Let me show that. Because that'd be great because I was just thinking I, I do training for sometimes now uh, roundabouts are starting to be a little bit popular in the United States and showing the traffic flow around a, a roundabout based on the TIA report, how much volume of traffic is coming through. Uh, how would that would look, you know, when you're doing presentations for uh, city council, city zoning, or basically city council and the city engineers and showing them, you know, what you're proposing with the volume report of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show, uh, this is a video, just a little teaser video we did of this diverging diamond. And this is actual VISM traffic and uh, not only the vehicles, but you'll notice the trucks articulate and it includes pedestrians mm -hmm. and cyclists as well. And, and if you guys aren't connected with me already on LinkedIn, yeah. I'm sure it's stuff like this all the time. So yeah, that's, that's something that people want, but to be honest, you know, we, this project right here, this is Seward highway in Alaska. And we did this at civil FX and then I've received permission to use it for beyond CAD, mm -hmm. but this project we did in VISM importing and mm -hmm. we were working with uh, Jacobs, the consultant on that. Mm -hmm. And in the end, what happened is our traffic system looked very similar and it was much easier to edit on the fly if something changed. Yep. And so they kind of just tossed out VISM in the end. And, and you think about it and, you know, what are you trying to show? If you're trying to show, you know, like, look, the, uh, the peak traffic in 20 years is going to blow out this, this queue yep. if we don't improve it, then you probably want to make sure and show the VISM stuff. Yep. But other than that scenario, you're just trying to make traffic look yep. really good. Yeah. And that's what, that's why we, we really focus on this advanced traffic system because 95 plus percent of the projects I've ever worked on, you just want really good traffic. And, and the disadvantage of using some of those other tools, you know, especially the ones built for architects is they, you can, you know, place traffic paths and traffic will move, but then that's about it. You, they don't yeah. have intersection controllers. One thing that drives me crazy is you'll see like a car whip around a corner, you know, and, and that's like, it's just so distracting from what you're trying to sell with the project. Yeah. And so each one of those problems that we've seen, we've tried to solve them with the future. And this is just within the, the uh, traffic system. So yeah. somebody posted a question of, is it being used for any, you know, transportation departments at all right now? And that's a good question. So uh, Washington mm -hmm. Department of Transportation, they're, they're starting to use Beyond CAD. They're proudly, uh, Kurt, he's a friend over there, and uh, he's proudly wanted to be the first DOT. And yeah. then I've, I've talked to Nevada Department of Transportation, who I've, you know, I used to work for them and have good mm -hmm. relationships about using it. Um, they, they use Civil FX so much that, it, to be honest, they'd probably just use it for the smaller stuff. Yeah. But uh, that's the, those are the main ones right now. Okay. Great, great. Um, somebody yeah, posted, thanks. use path tracing for rendering. Uh, so the rendering right now, I'm not sure what path tracing is. I, I mean, there's race tracing. We're, uh -huh. we're just using the real-time rendering within Unreal Engine. We're, mm -hmm. we're using the latest version. Uh, there's a new one that's coming out in 4.27 that we're trying to push to. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, 
the quality will keep getting better, but the advantages of real time is just you know the, mm -hmm. the rendering is yep. very fast, especially if you're used to the, the old style. So, yep. um, yeah. Any other questions before I move forward? Uh, uh, that's the only two so far. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me just talk through some of the other features. So the, the traffic system is kind of the headline feature mm -hmm. because uh, that's you know, one of the biggest things that sets us apart. But some of the other ones, you know, our 3D asset library, we're trying to specifically make it for these kind of projects. And to that point, you know, I always make the joke, you're not going to find um, bookshelves and throw rugs and, and couches like you will in those other ones. We mm -hmm. just want infrastructure stuff. Yep. You know, our joke is the asset library that has everything in it, but the kitchen sink uh, by, by design. So you'll see if you go to the website, kind of the categories that we have, pe people, vehicles, vegetation, landscape architecture. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, there are so many projects where the landscape architecture is, it's kind of the, um, the clothing of the project. It's the outward appearance and you mm -hmm. want to get that right. And so we have sculptures and rocks and appliques to kind of add those finishing touches. We have a lot of buildings and then transportation. We have pavement markings, traffic signals, light poles. Uh, we have construction category, which has, you know, all the construction equipment that mm -hmm. you can see, um, maintenance of traffic devices, like traffic cones and barrels and, and barriers. So, and then infrastructure, we actually have some road sections if you want those and bridge mm -hmm. sections and uh, energy things like, like windmills and solar panels. Mm -hmm. And so we've really tried to make this, and, and again, with my experience with Civil FX, we just kind of over the years made a hodgepodge library, mm -hmm. different things that worked within Unity. And, and so we're trying to make it so that you don't have to do that. It's just all right in, built in over 1500 assets. Yeah, I, I definitely like your uh, pavement marking because that's something you know that was lacking a lot. If, if, yeah. For those that use InfraWorks is pavement marking. You know, and I also like your signage library that flexibility to make your signs and, and use all those signage uh, that you have. And I said, that's, that's a good library too. You yeah. And your signs look correct on your plans. And let me jump to that too, while we're talking about it again, everything you see with beyond cat is things that I ran into over uh, the years of doing visualization for companies and then doing it, you know, with my own company in civil FX. Yeah. And one of those was the, the many hours that I've spent in SketchUp modeling freeway signs <laughs> yeah. for projects. And so we made a, a sign, custom sign creator. Yep. And you can make whatever sign you want. You can import your own PNG files as decals. If you're in, in another country, mm -hmm. uh, you can change the color. You can do overhead. You can do cantilever. You can do uh, mounted on bridges. You can do mm -hmm. roadside. And, uh, and soon we'll be also be adding things like a billboard creator and, um, power line generator. So these, these things that, you know, either I would do myself or we would hire someone to do, we're just trying to make them where you can do them, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes and you have the exact sign that you want. And it looks amazing. That's the goal with that. Is it available in different languages for, you know, putting the signs on there? But right now, I mean, you would just anything you could type with okay. the English keyboard and okay. then, uh, but we don't have, and that's a question we're getting more and more is, you know, like what support do we have in other countries? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're based in the United States and we're trying to make it work here first. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do all 200 countries at once. But uh, that said, you know, things like making the, uh, the cars flips. So the steering mm -hmm. wheels on the other side, we're actually yep. working on that right now because we've had that request a lot. And, and then signs, you know, anyone could go buy their signs for their own municipality or their mm -hmm. own country and import them we obviously mm -hmm. you can import files and place them that way mm -hmm. and then if you know if we grow a user base in australia or yep. uh, saudi arabia mm -hmm. or wherever it is then we'll we'll start adding those mm -hmm. features to the asset library over time um i guess my next question is let's say somebody did have a library i don't know what kind of file format it is and they <clears> wanted to provide that library to you that way it's available for everybody else. Is that an option too? Or is so you're, you're talking about a user, you're talking about like, um, if, yeah, let's just like say a user has some of kind of 3D room. model trying uh, of a bunch of signs in different languages, um, and or per for the country, and they're willing to give up their whole library of 3D models for the signs. You know, is that something that can be incorporated into your own library or that it takes a lot more to get it to work? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, if they were, uh, if they modeled them themselves and they were good quality, we would we would definitely be open to that. We would have to look and see, you know, file size, quality, all the things that we typically look into. Yeah. Um, but if it was something that they found online, like on Turbo Squid or, oh, or yeah, Sketchfab yeah. or something like that, then then we would probably just go look and buy it yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And one thing that's specific, one thing I try to be clear with beyond CAD, and this is the same thing for those architectural visualization engines like Lumion and Twin Motion, is you can't export. 3D models out of Beyond CAD. It's a it's a visualization engine, so the end mm -hmm. product is going to be image or video render or interactive visual experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, one of the reasons why is because we built this library, this asset library, from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. We've we've modeled some, but we've also purchased some from Sketchfab, from the Unreal Marketplace, mm -hmm. from Turbo Squid, and the licenses pro prohibit us from allowing users to export those and use them for other things. Yeah. And so. It's, uh, it's kind of like a video game as far as you're not going to be able to export something out of a video game, nor yeah. will you out of Beyond Cat. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. So I wanted to talk about visual graphics. And this is born from the frustration of trying to do some sort of camera matching in After Effects and then get some sort of arrows showing, you know, I'm showing a diverging diamond right here. You, you see this stuff with with roundabouts, with freeways, whatever. You want to show movement. You're, the job of visualization is to communicate the project and in arrows do that and so we have a pathway arrow system where it actually uh, you can go in and place them yourself very easily mm -hmm. they're animated you can change the speed the color and uh and all those things let me just go to this tutorial real quick and if this is interesting to you you can go check it out yourself but this just this video shows um shows how easy it is to place and adjust those different uh those nodes and those pathway arrows so that you you know this is a, a double roundabout in this example that i was mm -hmm. doing but you can change the color the arrow type the speed the size on all those very quickly and then and then everything in here can be phased and so you could actually say okay uh i'm going to show this phase this movement and then switch to another phase and then it's showing another phase or movement as well and so that's that's part of them is the arrows and then we also have the um what we call area highlight and mm -hmm. this is especially useful for useful for something like um like construction staging areas or even like zoning for uh land use you just place these points and then it's going to create that you'll see right here it's kind of trying to figure out where the mesh of the surface is in conflict with the pathway or with the area highlight, but we have tools where you can um, you can adjust it and get it to look just right. <clears throat> Let me fast forward a little bit. And then we have uh, different styles on that as well. And that can be static or it can be animated. And, you know, depending on what you're trying to do as far as drawing attention. And, and again, these are things that we would either do some sort of custom code in Unity or we would do after work in After Effects. Mm -hmm. And with Beyond CAD, you can do them just right within there. So invite anyone that's interested to check out that video. Um, we can do text labels. We can also do, you can make the uh, mesh glow. So any, mm -hmm. anything you import, it, mm -hmm. it has sub mesh elements and each of those can be turned on to have a different glow of different color. And so you can do some cool videos highlighting by just highlighting that mesh and something yeah, that's cool. again that you would have to do in after effects or something like that. All right, visual experiences is the next one we're going to go to. And this is, we, we know about image and video renders. They're like our bread and butter in the visualization world. They've always been effective at telling messages, uh, tell, telling the story of your project. But with Beyond CAD, you're building this scene in the editor. You're mm -hmm. spending a lot of time adding textures and assets, and traffic and cameras. And then once you have that, it's just so easy with the technology to, to do more with it. And so we call these visual experiences. You can see here, you can walk the project, you can ride it on a bike, or you can even drive it using a driving simulator. And this isn't like some sort of funky thing that you guys get set up. All you have to do is push F1 and you're there. And, um, and if you have a Xbox controller, I was doing a demo yesterday, mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can move around the project 
in an X with an Xbox controller. And that's the only time my kids ever are interested in what I'm doing is like, <laughs> when I'm like, Hey, this is built on Fortnite technology and you can do it. And they're like, Oh, wow. Cool. And then they go play Fortnite. And then, <laughs> anymore. then they try to wreck the car on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> they, they definitely try and do that. So, um, you can imagine how your InfraWorks model, yep. so you say you have a roundabout in InfraWorks within, you know, less than an hour, you can be walking or driving that project mm. using beyond cat. And, you know, especially if you can throw in some textures and some trees and you can really kind of bring your project to life and experience it. And that, and that is good for internal testing and, mm -hmm. and as well as working with your clients and the stakeholders in the public as well. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, we also have presenter mode, which works well with um, touch screens. And that's what I have and, and I like to play with. We did that a lot at Civil FX. We would take touch screens to public meetings and you could fly around the project and move anywhere. But it, it also works for just the, the good old mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. And same thing with those, you know, first or third person viewing. They work with the Xbox controller as well as the mouse and, um, and keyboard. So one thing I want to point out, if you go to beyondcad.com slash download, then you can download it right now. It's the, it's the full free trial. It has a watermark on it. And, but other than that, it's the free version. And so you can, we have a, a handful of example projects and you can go in and try them out for yourself. Like I mentioned before, you'll need a, a good GPU to run it. But uh, other than that, mm -hmm. you should be uh, good to go on just testing it out for yourself. And, and you can mm -hmm. import your own projects. And you may need to watch some of the training videos, but um, other than that, I, I recommend that because you know these are demos that we've we've mm -hmm. uh, invested in making them look nice. But until you yep. see your own project, it, it doesn't. I don't think it means yep. as much. All right, so forty phasing. We have a Gantt chart phasing in here. It's it doesn't integrate with you know Microsoft Project or anything like that yet, but we hope eventually. Uh, we'll do that, but right now you just kind of anything you import and, or any assets from the library, when you place them in the scene, you can phase them and uh, you can use a Gantt chart to get them all lined up the way that you want. So, and then we have, this is a bounty box feature. A, a couple of these, we're still kind of calling them beta, including this bounty box, because we just haven't done enough testing of it. But basically, I, the, there's a, there's a, problem with visualization, especially if we're trying to get the engineers to do it themselves, which is, okay, I don't have the time to go mm -hmm. and do all the, to model the city in the distance and the mountains in the distance. And a lot of times what I see is they'll just take the project corridor and it's got these really jagged edges, you know, it might look some sort of like an X because that's the way the plane flew over the project. Mm -hmm. and, and it just looks like you're going to fall off the edge of the world and it looks really messy. So yeah. what we're doing is we're kind of embracing that and doubling down on that with the bounded project. And you just set up this box and it auto clips the edges of your mesh and creates this kind of like chunk of the, the world look. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's something that we did for a couple of clients at Civil FX. And I hope that it will take off because it's a, it's a cool aesthetic and an ability to put the focus on the project and make it so that more people can do visualization. Mm -hmm. you know, not everyone has civil FX. They don't have artists that just model buildings like we yep. do. And if we ever want it to, to get to the point where everyone's doing it, we need some creative tools like this. Yep. And then there's a uh, media sequencer, which is basically video editing within beyond CAD. So you can set up your cameras and then you can place them in the media sequencer the way you want them. And then you render straight out of there. So you can have camera one, camera two, camera three, and then they'll render rather than rendering them out and then editing them later. So again, our, our goal is to make this a beginning to end visualization workflow. We know the artists are good at the modeling in civil 3D, inroads, open roads, whatever it is. Uh, and then they can import their files in. And then from there on, you know, we want Beyond CAD to take it to the end, even with the post-processing with our sequencer. So um, let's look at the comments. Okay. Wow. Lots of good comments. All right. Deliverable a video, or it can produce an interactive VR. Yep. Uh, so we interactive VR is 360 video. We did that at civil FX. We'll probably do that quarter one of 2022. We just haven't prioritized it, but yeah, that, that technically isn't that challenging because it's just the technology to render those 360 spheres, spheres is already available in unreal engine. Mm -hmm. We just need to set up the UI, make it work 
and, and do the testing on that. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, this, hopefully this will save a lot of time for a lot of people. All right. Can you talk about the level of effort required for putting together one of these models? I'm trying to get a feel for if it would take a day or six months to create an intersection model. Uh, I don't know if when you mean model, you mean the 3D model or if you mean the traffic model. So I'll answer both of those. For the 3D model, again, we're hoping that that model is already being created as part of the design and construction process. And so there shouldn't be too much extra work. There, there will be scenarios where it's not visualization ready and you need to do, you know, like the curb and gutter and the, the dustpan and the, uh, the sidewalks and stuff like that that may not have been modeled. Um, but for the most part, hopefully that's done and then you can import it in. There are things like buildings that it's like, you have some options, but it's never gonna be perfect. Um, you can model them themselves. My, one of my personal favorites is if you have a drone, go do uh, drone flyovers and create those buildings with photogrammetry and import them in. Um, you might be able to find them available. We have a lot of buildings in our asset library. They're not gonna match exactly. Um, so once you have those models, importing it, you know, is, is very easy. And then as far as an intersection for traffic, you know, that's, that's five minutes. And I can do that demo as well. So, so none of this is six months the, the modeling can take a while, but other than that, you know, beyond CAD, most of the things I do, uh, even these example projects you see, I've probably never spent more than five or six hours on one of these projects. And we're lucky because these are projects from civil FX. And so they were client projects and we'd done a lot of work on the modeling. That's why the buildings and things look good. But, um, but the visualization step within beyond cat is designed to not take a lot of time because we know you guys are busy and there is a learning curve. I mean, I've used this a lot. I, I've created this. And so the, the people that are using it for the first time, they're not going to be able to do, you know, their, their full Infoworks model and get it visualization ready in two or three hours, but it's, it will be a matter of hours and not, days and definitely not weeks. All right. How does this work when having several 3D models to place them in large coordinate system or needs to be translated to local coordinates to make it work? Okay. This is a good point as well. So if everything is exported the same way, so like, let's say that you're in InfraWorks and you have three different sections of your project, you export them all the same way. They will import all correctly relatively to each other within beyond CAD. We haven't done testing with global coordinates, uh, yet but that said we are working and right now our importing we su we suggest fbx or obj though we we uh, support a lot of the other file file formats but we were working with bentley to integrate with their itwin system it's called digital itwin and that way we're going to be able to natively support bentley files and other proprietary file, file formats so dgn dwg sketchup revit all these files will be able to be imported natively once we get that working, we want to focus on making sure the global um, coordinate system work because I know there are times, let's take the example of you have uh, an InfraWorks model, but then you have the VISM data and they're both globally uh, exported correctly. But then in beyond CAD, they're probably not going to come in the same way because they were exported after out of different programs. So we know that problem exists right now. You just have to manually place it and adjust it. But long term, we, we want to make that work. Okay, uh, long does free trial last? So right now the way it works is you download it and it lasts forever. It's just the watermarks. Um, so you can use it evaluation as long as you want to. And then when you subscribe, it just takes away those watermarks and it's a floating license. So you could have beyond cat on multiple offices, uh, computers in your office, and then one person can use it and it will take the watermarks off for them. And then you switch it over to the other person. It's just a subscription ID. You don't, don't even need the email. Um, that said, I am looking into the option of adding a free month trial as well, where you can use it for a free month without watermarks to really, you know, maybe even use it for some production mm -hmm. work. So, man, you guys have a lot of good questions. Uh, Anything else? I have a question. So what would be yep. uh, your minimum requirement or recommended requirement for your PC or laptop that's going to be installed in the software in case the users are curious? Yep. That's a good question. So if you go to that web, that link, beyondcad.com slash download. Mm -hmm. We have those listed here. We have our minimum specs and our recommended specs. Um, and then one thing as well is this, this is a big file. If you've ever played one of the AAA gaming tile mm -hmm. titles, there's a lot of data. So it's uh, the initial downloads about 30 gigs, but then that uh, exports or what's it called unzips into like 60 gigs. 
So it's, and then we're doing patches all the time with new assets. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need some space on your hard drive. Yeah. But, um, but yep. Those that have been in this space, they, I think they understand how that works. Yep. So we, I also have these videos easy as one, two, three to, to download and install. Mm -hmm. The second one is navigating and scene building. And the third one is importing and texturing CAD files. And then you just click this link. What it does is it downloads the launcher. Mm -hmm. And then when you open it, it will look something like this. And actually, sorry, it's going to look something like this. We have products, we have more info, and then we have kind of some updates up here. Mm -hmm. And so when you first do it, it's going to have an option to uh, either locate or add. So like if you already have the files downloaded, do you click locate and it will go find those files so that you can launch it from here? Or you can go to update or you can go to add and that, that's where it will download that 27 gigabyte uh, zipped folder and then extract it and install it. And then, um, and then once you're done, then you update it. And we're trying to do updates about once a month unless we break something and then we you know, update the next day. So, <laughs> um, so that's, that's mostly how um, Beyond CAD works. Mm -hmm. We have a second product called Beyond Typicals, and I want to talk about that. But before I jump to that, um, just want to ask, see if there's any other questions. All right. So do you consult or sell the software commercial or just sell the software commercially? So technically, I sold a business and I signed a non-compete where I won't provide 3D visualization services for till like 2023 or four. Um, anyway, my job, my goal isn't to uh, do 3D visualization. But with, if you're a subscriber, we will offer all the training we can to make sure you're successful. I'm always working with our users or even potential users to take their files and show them how, how to import them. Because once they see their, their files in Beyond CAD and they can see that they can add traffic and walk it and drive it, they get pretty excited. And so I'm doing that stuff all the time and my team is there to help as well. So when you subscribe, you're, you're not only getting the license, but you're getting our support to make sure you're successful as well. And we, we plan to scale that up as much as we can, uh, as, as we grow our users as well. Um, and, and so you can just go to our website and go to our pricing page. I'll show you actually how that works. Uh, it's just beyondcad.com slash pricing. This is accessible from the menu as well. If you go to subscribe, you go to pricing. And uh, right now we have three options, month to month, six month, or yearly. If you do it yearly, you pay $1,800 USD and, uh, and that's $150 a month. And then you just put in your credit card information. It will email you that subscription ID and then you use that to activate the license within Beyond Cap. Let me- Question, let me that on, that. On, is yeah. all the assets come with the full version or is that separate package for the, all the assets? Good question. They, they all come right now. It's all together. Okay. Uh, I, I am looking at seeing if we can break out some of that just for smaller download sizes. Yeah. But, um, and, and then even someday we've looked at making like a pro mm -hmm. version as well, because there are other features we're looking to add like mm -hmm. uh, cloud GPU streaming, where you don't even have to have it on your computer. You can oh, just go okay. to a link and use it that way. We're, we're testing that out right now mm -hmm. too, but for now um, it's just one beyond CAD. Um, one beyond CAD product and mm. that thing it's done. So does it have like dynamic linking? So if I'm importing, you know, you said an FBX file or, or OBJ file, you said, uh -huh. and, and I'm bringing that in, let's say I override that file. Will it automatically update or you actually have to go, go in somewhere and say hit update or relink it or. Got it. Yeah. So that's a good question. And right now there is no linking. You would just mm -hmm. have to re-import the file if it was, okay. um, if it was changed, mm -hmm. but with this iTwin integration, we are working on that because that, because I, iTwin supports that. What it does mm -hmm. is it goes and it checks, mm -hmm. okay, what has changed in this file and just pull in that data. Don't, yeah. don't pull everything in. And so our goal is to make that working, uh, you know, probably by January or February, hopefully that will be working pretty solidly. And, and that's the goal because mm -hmm. what we want is we don't want our designers and those modeling the products or the, the projects to have to export to some weird file format, bring it into beyond CAD, and then it changes and they have to go through that again. What we want is them to just keep their native design files. Mm -hmm. And then anytime something changes, they just refresh in beyond CAD okay. and everything's up to date. Mm -hmm. And then they can adjust, you know, the traffic or the assets accordingly. 
Um, so that's, that's the goal. We're not quite there yet, but mm -hmm. hopefully we will be. Cool. You guys have lots of good questions. So this is beyond CAD uh, live version right now. This is one of our example projects. It's a third street project in, uh, in Las Vegas. I'm flying around just using the keyboard and the mouse W A S D up here. This is kind of our master play button. When you turn it off, you see these, these traffic paths. That's how they look when you're placing them. Let me go over here real quick and just, you know, show how fast it is to set up an intersection. I mentioned that before. <clears throat> so let's just do, and if there are any traffic engineers and I'm doing this wrong, I apologize already. So let's make this a two lane and a thousand vehicles per hour is way too much. And 45 miles an hour is, fa is fast. So let's do that. And then let's do one coming the other way. <clears throat> Again, let's change the parameters of our vehicle path. And then let's get <clears throat> some going the other way. And actually I'm, I'm doing this in uh, 3D, but I should be doing it in 2D because this works just so much better um, in my experience. So this is even less and even slower. And while you're doing that, is there typically a, like a you know, kind of a preliminary low, low resolution mode? And then when you're done, you switch it to like a higher resolution for better performance or you're just in one mode the whole time? Uh, you're just in one mode the whole time. We, let me see settings. You can go into the display panel and look at, turn on our frames per second. This is really good because I'm 1080 resolution and I'm not in an area with a lot of assets. There are some bigger projects where that's going to drop down to you know, 10 or 15 frames per second. So um, we do have an option in our present mode that where you can kind of turn down the, the, um, the graphic fidelity to speed things up in presentations. And I'll also show that in just a second. So I placed these four paths. I could go through and rename them, but I'm not going to right now just for the sake of time. But I'm going to add four paths. This is our intersection controller right here. And so phases, I'm, I just need two phases, but we could go up to four phases. And so I'm going to use this dropper tool to select all these different paths. And then the pink bars are the stop bars. So you want to, if you have stop bars, you want to line them up in there, something close to it. And why pink? It's because it's really easy to see. That's why. All right, let me switch back to 3D. And then we're going to have these ones on phase one and these ones on phase two. And then we're going to cross our fingers and hope it works on the first time. And I'm going to speed this up. We have a speed slider on here. So you can see they, they wait through 60 seconds and then they go through. And then we have vehicle distribution, either a global one up here. So let's say that we wanted to do, you know, a lot of trucks. I don't know if that if my math's right, but maybe it's close. And then we should have more trucks. Yeah. And as you saw in the video, those trucks, they articulate, which is very important and, uh, Often rare, man. That one just rear-ended that car. So, this is and the traffic system is definitely imperfect. You're you're going to see things where you're like, okay, that that wasn't exactly right. But um, it's it's definitely the most powerful one I've ever seen in Visualization Engine. And for the most part, you're going to get really good results on that. All right. So, uh, let me just turn my traffic back on over here. And then I'll just show the present mode. You go here. You can get all your settings the way you want them. And then you go to present. And this is the settings we were talking about with a uh, level of detail quality. So we can do lower if we're trying to get better frames. And that's going to check. That's going to affect like the um, the level of detail of the trees, like how which which version of the tree you're getting, the high quality or the low quality, and based on distance. And then best. You're going to get the opposite and then uh, let's enter character mode and so now i'm again using my keyboard wasd 
to get around. And then we can swap characters using C. You can see that we have cyclists from our cyclist path. And this project, this is a city of Las Vegas project. That's actually where they, the first time a client ever asked us for being able to do a first person or a third person view. And we could do uh, X. Oh, sorry. That's X on the, on the controller. So we can do first person, can, per, first person view. So this is a really good opportunity to see how the project looks. So let me see what other questions we have. And then I want to talk about, uh, all right. So how were those buildings modeling modeled? Is that a separate process? Yes, these were modeled in um, SketchUp. This was, again, I had a company called Civil FX. We provided visualization services. So we had a client budget and, and we just modeled these one by one in SketchUp and, and imported them. Uh, the buildings is just something that you have to handle manually depending on your project. Again, I love the idea of photogrammetry because you're going to get the best results and it's going to be the fastest if you're able to do that. Um, if not, you can either model them, you could have someone else that you could hire to model them, but there's never a, a one answer solution. And, and there's never anything we could do within beyond CAD. Um, I shouldn't say never, you know, maybe we can integrate with something like uh, near map or like where you get on Google earth where you can pull in areas. And we've, we've discussed that, but for now, you know, every project's going to be different on what you're going to do with the buildings. Okay. So I wanted to talk about one other thing <clears throat> and that is our second product. And originally this was going to be um, something from uh, a feature within beyond CAD, but we realized that there was no really reason why it needed to be a feature within beyond CAD and that there would be some people that want to use it outside of beyond CAD. And so we separated it out. It's not yet available, but in uh, January it will be, and that's, we call it beyond typicals. And if you've ever created a typical section or some sort of presentation, we're trying to make this as easy as you possibly can to do. And each of these sections, you can edit them. You can edit the width with these, these arrows down here, or you can edit that here. And then you can change the direction of the traffic. You can change the speed of the traffic. And so really, truly, we're trying to um, make it so you can go from, you know, what may have taken days or hours to minutes to create for, uh, for these kind of typical sections. Where did I put in there? That was a fun video. Let's put in a bicycle path and let's put in the sidewalk. <clears throat> so every section you drop in, they're automatically populated, but then you can also change the asset that they're populated with. We could do a tree. Um, we can do some buildings. If we wanted, that's not gonna work. Um, let's flip those buildings. You can flip anything. Oh, you're not, you're not the buildings. But let me move those over on the other side and make our sidewalk wider. So I, I love this. This product because you know beyond cat you need a minute to explain what it can do and why it's so powerful but with this one you know it's just it's almost self-explanatory on what it does and why it could be needed let's do um yeah that's definitely helpful because uh for those engineers that have to go to city council city zoning meetings you got to do these typical little section diagrams so you can show yeah. to the council what the potential roads gonna look like the street section, I could see a, a definite benefit. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you can switch to 2D if you want. Um, the labels, they're automatically generated. You'll see they kind of overlap a little bit, but you can go through and edit them, um, bring down the, the height of those. And then what we, we're going to have, hopefully by that January launch, is in the top left, you'll have kind of phasing or alternatives where you can build different sections and then you click those different sections and it just auto swaps between them. So you can use that to show, uh, you know, sections along alignment, or you could use it to show construction staging, anything like that. Uh, I mean, for example, we could go through already and change this to construction barrels and then change the texture to something like dirt to show that you're reducing that down to two lane for the duration of the construction. 
and then you switch that and then it would flip back to uh, the next phase or anything like that. So uh, are there any questions on beyond typicals? Go oh, to... I don't see anything here. Okay. And so does it give you like a, so here. when you create those beyond typical, does it, is there like a, a like a uh, option says export as an image or something? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I should have showed that. Yeah. yeah so that's where can, I would be using that a lot. Yep. So you go to render and you can render the um, screenshot or you can mm -hmm. record video. And one thing that we've really been trying to work on this because you'll use them a lot for mm -hmm. like a PowerPoint or an InDesign file or a website mm -hmm. and what I would used to have to do is I'd have to like green screen behind it and then go take out that stuff. So you get, get the PNG, the alpha channel. Yeah. But what this does is it actually renders the alpha channel automatically. If you want, you just, mm -hmm. you just do the screenshot with alpha. And so those trees, the buildings, that stuff will all be cut out automatically. Mm -hmm. And you can just drag that right into your PowerPoint. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. So let me, let me show, I think I have some of those up here. Yep. So what, what it does is it creates these three renders, uh, one with them combined, one with the, just the background. And then this one is the actual alpha image. So, so all that stuff cut out behind, um, you could just drag it into any website or, or PowerPoint automatically without any. any I like that labels the, the, the actual dimensions of each parameter or each section. That's kind of nice too. Yeah. And I don't know if you, you saw, but, but those are dynamic. So, if I'm doing that, look, if you look at that text right up here, that text is changing while this is changing. Oh, on. So those, those automatically update. We're, we're going to have more options for labels to put them below, change the color. Um, right now, they're, they're just pretty simple. But you can turn off the labels as well. You could do them in Photoshop if you wanted. But we, we're trying to make this as robust and uh, user friendly as possible because we just there, there's there's a need for this and there would be more of a need. But it you know no one wants to pay five hundred to a thousand dollars per typical section. But with this, you know, we're hoping to drive that cost down to you know ten to twenty dollars per typical section. So you can go to our website and then go to subscribe and go to Beyond Typicals and learn more about it. Uh, right now it is pre order, so you can learn more about that. <clears throat> but hopefully by January it will be available um, to everyone else. So, yeah. That's so, cool. yeah. No Any other, other questions. I, Let's see. I, I've used most of my hour. These, these <laughs> questions have been awesome. Yeah. There's one more. If you got something else you want to show before we kind of end our webinar. Nope. I, I'll just end with, um, you know, if, if any of you guys are interested in this, feel free to reach out to me, Sam at beyondcad.com and I mean, you guys are probably capable, feel free to download it and test it out yourself. But if you want to see one of your projects, if you have a, a decent, you know, roundabout or diverging diamond or off ramp or something, send me the files and I'll just go in. I love to take those files, you know, from my own testing, it's kind of a challenge and I'll, I'll bring them in. I'm not going to do your full project. I, I don't have the time and I don't think you want me to, but I, I'll bring it in and um, see how far I can get it in beyond CAD just to show what it can do to the data that you're already generating for those those plans and construction documents. And then, you know, and then we can talk from there and I can even send you that file that for beyond cat, it's called a BCAD file. I can send you that BCAD file that you could open up and use in your own version of beyond cat as well. Watermarked or watermarked, um, that would work. So that's my pitch is if this is interesting, send me your files, I'll play around with them. Um, and, and we can go from there. Cool. Cool. Well, I appreciate Sam showing the, the software. I mean, uh, I've got to install it on my work computer and I haven't installed it at home, but I want to do it on my work computer. <laughs> so it's a little bit, runs a little smoother on this one. So, um, but you know, great, great presentation. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to trying to start using it. Um, I, I definitely see the potential of it. So and I can see the drastic um, um, improvements that's been made on it. And also basically, how it differentiates itself from Lumion and Twinmotion, you know, because I, I have that software too and I dabble with it a little bit. Um, definitely no expert, but I can see how much, you know, better it is than those two products, you know, uh, for, especially on the engineering side. So, yeah. So. Yeah, that's the goal. And uh, one thing I should have mentioned too, the Beyond Typicals, they will be free for Beyond CAD users. You know, mm -hmm. that's just another 
differentiation from twin motion and Lumion, mm-hmm. you know, is, is stuff like that too. I, there's actually an article on my website too, called what makes yeah. beyond cat different from twin motion. So I invite everyone to check that out as well. Okay. Well, cool. We'll end our webinar here. Um, and if you want to reach out to Sam, he's on LinkedIn, any other social media or email accounts you want to share? Um, uh, just check out our website, beyondcad.com and, uh, and then LinkedIn. It's linkedin.com slash in slash Sam Lytle, L-Y-T-L-E. Mm-hmm. And, and again, my email, Sam at beyondcad.com. So love looking forward to connecting with any of you. Cool. All right, Sam, I appreciate it. And uh, we definitely be looking forward to testing the product even more. So and thanks for stopping by. Definitely Thank appreciate you, Tony. And then I'll let everybody know once we get posted on, on the YouTube channel and stuff, this recording. So, okay. All right, it's well, have a good, have a good week honor. and have a good Christmas. So you too. All right. Bye.